So here is a chart that has guidelines for the solubility for selected ions in aqueous solution. And you can see in the chart that there are three rows that relate to soluble ions and their exceptions. And then there are two rows that relate to typically insoluble ions with those exceptions. And it's for this reason that I came up with five mnemonics that will help us use these guidelines. And those sentences, those mnemonics, are here at the bottom. Saul Chuck Kualke knows exceptions? Nah. Saul Brickell double hugged Agatha and Paul Bunyan too. Saul Salf ate two huge bars and peanut butter too. The poor crow was cold. He huddled with everyone, but Al K said, nah. So, you two are always combined, not when we're strongly basic. Let's review those mnemonics on the next slide. The first mnemonic tells us that acetate ions, any alkali metal ion, any nitrate, any ammonium ion, whenever you have a compound that has any of those ions, those compounds are soluble in aqueous solution, no exceptions. The second mnemonic tells us that these three anions, the bromide, iodide, and chloride ions, any compound with those is going to be soluble in aqueous solution, unless the cation in those compounds is the mercury-1 ion, the silver ion, or the lead-2 ion. Saul Brickell double hugged, and when you double hug something, you join with it. Agatha and Paul Bunyan, too. The third mnemonic tells us that the sulfate ion is typically going to appear in soluble compounds, unless the cation in those compounds is the mercury 1 ion, the barium ion, the strontium ion, or the lead 2 ion. Notice that with the barium and strontium ion, I've combined those into the word bars in the mnemonic, and we have to be a little dyslexic with the R and the S in strontium. Nonetheless, I've still found the mnemonic useful. The fourth mnemonic is, the poor crow was cold. He huddled with everyone, but Al K said, nah. And you can see that the mnemonic relates rather well to that. The po crow was cold. He huddled with everyone. When you huddle with someone, you join with it. When ions join, when they are clumped, they are insoluble. But Al K, that is the alkali metal ions and the ammonium ion, don't form insoluble compounds. And lastly, so you two are always combined, not when we're strongly basic. The so part refers to the sulfide ion and the hydroxide ion, and this mnemonic suggests that these two ions are always joined, not with each other, but with other cations to form insoluble substances, unless those cations are the ammonium ion, or what I term the strong base cations, which is the alkali metals and the heaviest three alkaline earth elements, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. If you have a good imagination, that's a lowercase b to remind you that those are the strong base cations. One additional word about three of these mnemonics. This mnemonic here refers to the bromide, iodide, and chloride ions. And what I've found is that this mnemonic almost always works for ates and ites that are related to these anions. For example, bromate, bromite, chlorate, chlorite, and so on. We're not going to change the mnemonic, but it's good to know that it also works for iodates, iodites, almost all the time. Similarly, with this mnemonic, which has only the sulfate ion in it, I've found that it works pretty well for sulfite ions as well. As you can see, what we're doing here is we're broadening the applicability of these mnemonics to a wider range of compounds. And the last mnemonic that I'd like to say a little extra something about is this one, which has the chromate ion in it, 
but I found that it also works for the most part for the dichromate ion. Last thing, these mnemonics don't work all the time. They work about 98% of the time. They will do a lot to help make your life simpler when you're dealing with solution chemistry.